Welcome to the Switchblade Sisters Social Club, a true crime podcast where two sisters exploit their worst fears for your entertainment. You're welcome. I'm Dee. And I'm Rhonda, and together we are the Sake Sisters. For more information, check out our website at www.switchbladesisterssocialclub.com or find us on Instagram and Facebook at Switchblade Sisters Social Club. Thanks for listening. This is Switchblade Sisters Social Club, where two sisters exploit their worst fears for your entertainment. I'm Dee. And I'm Randa. Hi. So, we've got new merch. Oh, this is my favorite merch drop so far. I know. So, we've got three bits of new merch. We've got Susie's sister's quote, which you will say for us. Oh, yeah. If you if you can choose between pissing on the floor, puking... Sorry, sorry, let me start again. If you can choose between puking in the sink or pissing on the floor, you piss on the floor. Yeah. And we also have Merchant Navy merch. Do you know what? Ma, you haven't even mentioned... The, the best one, I uh, think. No, the greatest lesbian merch. Yes, yes. Courtesy of the episode on Lady Bathory. Yes. So um super excited about that one. Um, do check it out. We've got links in the show notes and all sorts of places. So have a look at our merch. We've got loads of other fun merch as well. Um, in and other- you know what, Dee? You really flexed your design skills on those ones. Thanks. I worked hard on them because they were important to me. Mm. <laughs> um, in other news, I turned 41 this week. Just yesterday. Just yesterday in terms of the day that we're recording. As we know, podcast time is not linear. Um and it made me reflect a bit because my birthday coincides. It's the same week that we launched the podcast last year. Oh, oh my so God. So it made me reflect not only on what I've been up to in the last year, but what we've been up to as a podcast uh-huh. last year. And I've listed a few things that have happened. And it's okay. just bonkers, okay? Yeah. But these are some of the biggest things that I did in the last year. So I turned 41. So this is my 40th year that I... Uh, Broke up with my fiance and went to New Orleans for Essence Fest and saw Salt and Pepper, Missy Elliott, Ice Tea and Ice Cube, and a whole bunch of other people. Helped Isla with opening her bookshop, Criminally Good Books York. Do check them out. Uh, got stuck in a war zone when me and my dad decided to go back home to Palestine on the day of the recent escalations and violence. Uh, got new titties. Oh. Got COVID twice. <laughs> We went twice. The long COVID. Uh, mm. Stayed in a Scottish castle. Got really fast at roller skating. Uh, went to a bunch of writing workshops. Went to a rage room, and as you described, it was like watching Bambi have a tantrum. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to Dublin to see Murder Most Irish, another great podcast. Uh, broke my friend's ankle in roller derby. Uh, went to some awesome punk festivals, got some more stupid tattoos, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like my biggest achievement that year was that we launched our podcast, which is yes. such a joy. So since we launched our podcast, we've been to a couple of crime cons. I went to Harrogate Crime Writing Festival, and I'm going again this year to Harrogate Crime Pe- Writing Festival. So that's, tr- um, that's crime fiction writing. Uh, but if anyone else is going, then let us know because I'd love to meet you in the beer tent. Um, got permission to write for Crime and Investigation Play Channel. So I now get paid to listen to true crime podcasts and watch murder shows. Met Colin Sutton. <laughs> Met Raphael Rowe, who knew who the fuck we oh, were. We yeah. went on some amazing podcasts as guests like Blue Murder Club, Hi Kaza and Lauren, and Flix Watchers. Um, we had some amazing guests. I mean, our guests, right? We had Colin Sutton twice. Twice. Mm-hmm. Stephen Keogh, Dr. Honor Townshend, Dr. Brian Frederick twice, Louis Ferranti, Cherry from Crimepedia. We've got a bunch of other really exciting interviews lined up, so keep an eye out for them. Um, I started running with Linda at the Brewery Market, the Murder on Tap events. We've got St. George's event coming up, so do check out our socials again. There's links in our bios on Instagram and so forth. 
Uh, we made a whole bunch of new friends with our listeners because we really do think of them as friends, right? Mm -hmm. And we even got to meet some of them in person. And we talk about them. Well, we, we talk about them at our family gatherings. Yeah, when you when you say we think about them as friends, we actually talk about them. Like, oh, what has Susie been up to? Blah blah blah. <laughs> we got to meet some in person, like Joanna and Claire, and a whole bunch of other people, and it's just been such an honor and so humbling. I tell you what isn't on that list. What? You haven't had an affair with a detective yet. <laughs> There's still time. So, Despite our best efforts. Um, I also this week had my own true crime incident. Oh, yeah. But I just have to say, it freaked the fuck out of me. Because mm -hmm. I won't go into the parking situation in my streets, but I know a lot of people can relate to how parking is getting more and more difficult. Um, so the long and the short of it is I went out to see Bob Villain. It was amazing. I uh, got back and had to park like, honestly, like a 15 minute walk from my house, you know? Um, I mean, I exaggerate, but it was a good 10 minutes away. Um, was dozing on the sofa, 2 a.m., two police officers knock on my door. So obviously my first reaction was my whole family is dead. Mm -hmm. That would be my first Literally, thought. You know, if anyone's got anxiety, they get this, that you run through mm -hmm. really worst case scenarios. In did they tell you quickly it's funny because i didn't actually ask you about this yesterday did they ask you quickly no did i was like get to the fucking point uh, so um so like, it out. instantly <laughs> i also answered my door with a baseball bat because <laughs> mm. you know i don't know what i was going to do with it see my previous reference to the rage room <laughs> but um i yeah, I, uh, if it's just one family member, then another family member would tell me about it. So my whole family must be wiped out. Mm -hmm. Then he starts talking about my car. And I was like, seriously, are you... Because the street I parked on is like permit only, starting at 8.30. So I had to set an alarm to go and move my car before the permit time starts. So when he started talking about my car, I was like, are you kidding me? Have you have they sent two police officers because I've parked on, on the street, you know? Anyways, a uh, drunk driver basically crashed into my park car so you were probably fucking relieved when you heard that i'm you, not angry at all you know that i sent you you can hear me laughing when he finally gets to the point no <laughs> which is kind of awkward because it's when he says it's a drunk driver but it's when it clicked in my head oh mm -hmm. everyone's fine mm -hmm. but once he said and he's been arrested i was like okay so he's all right as well Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, it's, you know, it's just my my car that's been damaged. Jesus. Long two police long. officers showing up at two in the morning. I would fucking imagine the worst. The worst. So, um, and then he came in and we had to do all the swapping details and this, that, and the other. I kept on referring to my car as the crime scene. I was like, <laughs> can, we really? it, can we just call it my car? The no, funny thing, Dee, you probably wouldn't have even noticed that someone crashed into it. <laughs> <laughs> honestly it now like if you let go of the steering wheel it does a hard right and the bump Ooh, oh that's not just cosmetic my car because i was like oh great i don't want to get a ticket on on top of it shit d that's not just cosmetic no mm, so, um yeah so i mean it's you know it's one of those situations where once you get a bit of perspective you're like okay no one was hurt worse things have happened mm. it's good that this drunk driver hit a parked car and not a child or something mm. well do you know when you're like drunk driving? That's so nineties. Are people still doing yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. You don't hear about it as much, thank God. What? One of my neighbors, because I posted it in the street WhatsApp group, and I was like, "Look, if anyone saw the police, because they're a gossipy bunch, like any street, mm. anyone saw the police come to mine at two, I'm not taking <laughs> drugs or a prostitute or whatever. <laughs> Someone just hit my parked car, and if you see my car, it wasn't me. I'm not that bad a driver. Um, and one of my neighbors was like um oh I I was coming home at that time or something and I actually spoke to the driver and he was really upset and really apologetic and he swerved to avoid a an inconsiderate oncoming driver and it's like no <laughs> inconsiderate pinballed down quite a wide street because he hit not just my car on one side oh my god another car on the other side so I'm not gonna feel sorry for him no because at the end of the day the guy was a drunk driver he could have killed somebody yeah, of course he's apologetic. He's getting so. What he actually is is a cunt, <laughs> to be honest. You know I mean? So we're happy he's okay, but that doesn't change the fact. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, he doesn't deserve to die, but like, I'm not going to feel sorry for this guy. No. Anyway, so yeah, that was my true crime incident. 
been an eventful week. Oh. Anyway, hopefully uh, you'll get an insurance payoff and get a new car. Well, I was like, oh, you could have at least written it off so much that I get a new car. Mm. That's not going to happen. It's just going to get fixed up. So it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. But you know when you get a higher car that's nicer than your car and it's like, oh, yes. <laughs> my car back with the lack of cup holders and Bluetooth. And it's the first time I've driven a car that's got a camera that films you when you're going, you know what I mean? Like when you reverse. Oh. I've never had a car like that. So it's like, great. Can't wait to have my Citroen C3 that's 15 years old back. <laughs> anyway um so in a little change up because in theory it's your turn um yep. to tell me a fucking story little change up i'm gonna tell you a story so <clears throat> tell me the fucking story oh i'm looking right. forward to this okay so the other week you covered phoebe handsjuck and again mm -hmm. we're saying her name right um that was the lady who was found in her bin room at her apartment block. Yeah. She had fallen down the chute. There was all this talk about whether it was an accident or whether she, it was suicide. All this kind of bullshit. Well, clearly, she had been murdered, allegedly. Um, and do you know what? I went to go and visit my friend Krista today for coffee and she had uh, the TV on and it was friends on mute while we were chatting. I looked up and it was the episode where Phoebe... Oh, yeah. Box into her garbage chute so mm -hmm. like just to highlight again how small these things are mm -hmm. and how awkward they are i mean they're designed so that people can't accidentally fall into yeah. them. do you know what i mean um and and also i sent you a picture in the top corner it said tonight police academy four i <laughs> like, know <"Sit> <laughs> patrol <laughs> our favorite one yeah. oh Anyways, listen to last week's episode if you need to know why that's so special to us, so dear to our hearts. Um, so yeah, it was a case that I confused with the case I'm going to cover, and I mentioned it briefly. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to separate the cases out and get the details unconfused in my mind, and to relate to you this other story where you'll be able to see a lot of similarities, a lot of differences, but a lot of simila similarities. Um, so... When you covered that one, I thought, now's the time. Um, so today I'm going to cover the case of Ellen Greenberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, I don't know this one. Right. Well, I want to share the screen with you because I um, just want to show you how freaking cute this girl is. Oh. Right? Yeah, but, that's a nice smile. Yeah, gorgeous girl. Um. So, Ellen, also known as Ellie, was a first grade teacher, a grade school teacher. She was an only child with a really close relationship to her parents, and she had lots of friends. So she does just, I know they always say this about murder victims, because spoiler alert, she's been murdered, allegedly. Um, but she genuinely just seemed like a lovely person who was very dear to all the people that she was close to, you know. She was 27 and living in Philadelphia. Her school was not the best in the area, but she saw this as her students needing her more. And so she was really happy with her job and her life. Like she was at a school that she felt like she could make a really big impact on, you know? Um, she was engaged to be married to Sam Goldberg, who was a local TV producer. They had met three years earlier. And um, in fact, it's heartbreaking, she had sent uh, save the dates out for her wedding just three days before her death. Um, I'm going to just show you quickly a picture of the two of them without trying to get any spoilers. Just bear with me. Bear with Okay, let me share this with you. So that's her and her fiance. So, you know, they look like a perfect couple, don't they? Mm. Or just happy, et cetera, et cetera. Obviously, we know that's not the case, or we would no. have. No. It was him. 
let me tell you the story. Okay. So she did suffer from anxiety, um, which, you know, I suffer from general anxiety disorder. And so I can tell you that you can be very happy with every aspect of your life. Know that you're lucky. Know that you've got all this good shit going on and still have severe anxiety at the same time. I can't explain why these two thought processes can coexist, but that is the point of anxiety. It fucks with your head. So even though she was happy with so much of her life, she did have anxiety. Sometimes it's a chemical hormonal imbalance. Sometimes it's just your way you're predisposed to thinking, like it's your thought process. Um, she had called her parents a few weeks before her death to say that she wanted to quit her job and come home. But I mean, who doesn't feel like that sometimes, right? <laughs> Like I'm 40, oh but now and my parents live 50 minutes drive away and sometimes I feel like that. And so she's 27. Do you yeah. 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 I'm sorry. I was just laughing because <laughs> I think we wanted to quit every job until we became self-employed. Doesn't. And I mean, it yeah. sounds like her job was challenging. Yeah. You know what I mean? Dealing with young children, I presume in a deprived area. There's going to be behavioral issues. There's going to be parental issues. There's going to be all oh. sorts. I mean, you know, you're a teacher. So, and then not to mention like dealing with management of schools so it's not a fucking surprise she's had down days especially if she's got anxiety where she's like mm -hmm. i just want to fuck it all off and just go back to being a kid for a moment right especially because her parents are far away sorry i don't remember where her parents are but they're definitely not in the same city and i don't think they were in the same state even mm -hmm. um when her parents tried to ask her what was upsetting her she said it was the stress of wedding planning also getting to her and Every single person who has ever planned a wedding can run, oh. I'm sure. Like, no matter what size of budget you you have, no matter what size of guest list, every person planning a wedding has had some kind of stress, you know? Like, you and I, we had quite large weddings because Arab, right? Like, mm. and I know... Oh, especially when you're not a fan of weddings, and huh? you, you, especially when you're not a fan of weddings... Because neither of us were got, up like, no. on our wedding day. Um, mm. But I know after that, when I tried to sort of help and support and advise other friends getting married, they might have thought that I was exaggerating, not exaggerating, but that I had all of this stress because my wedding was a, quite a large wedding in terms of number of guests. And I was trying to explain to them, like, even if you have a small, low-key wedding, there will be family dynamics and dramas. There will be people that seem to think it's their day and come to you with ridiculous demands. The best advice is A, don't do it because I personally believe marriage is going to become redundant and obsolete at some point. I don't really understand the point of it. It seems like an ancient tradition that's kind of... Like at the moment, the, the main benefit seems to be if you have kids. And even then, I mean, it doesn't offer any that. more security. Huh? They are eliminating it a little bit in terms of a lot of the benefits and the stuff yeah. that as a married couple with kids. They're starting to make it um, more equal for people who have kids that aren't married and stuff. Mm. Yeah. My second advice is B, <laughs> if you're going to do it elope, huh? Elope, exactly. Elope, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what size her wedding was meant to be or um, what her budget was or what the plans were for this wedding but she's only 27 and having to plan a wedding so it's not a fucking surprise right her her wedding was seven months away her job she said had been like quite hectic recently as well so I mean I'm sure you can relate to that as well how stressy it can be at times being a teacher um and then her dad said she had been calling regularly to talk about her stress and that she seemed different in the months leading up to her death so don't know whether this is a coincidence or related, but mm. that's just the facts from her dad. The teacher, though, who took over from Ellie, said that all of her records, all of her lesson plans, everything, like this is the teacher who took over after Ellie had died, everything was up to date and looked perfect. It didn't look like she was struggling or behind in any way. I mean, there could have been stresses coming from other places, but... Mm. It wasn't a case of her being behind in that sense. So was there something else that was bothering her that she didn't share in the run-up to her death? She agreed with her parents to go and get professional help with her anxiety, which is fantastic. I recommend everyone does that, whether they have anxiety or not, because life is difficult. 
Um, and like, you know, just a little, I know I've talked about this previously, but I think it's important because we have this platform. Like when I was really struggling with my anxiety, I was absolutely mortified at the thought of having to go to the doctor, talk about it, especially because like I was saying before, I knew I had a good life. You mm. know, you feel like, oh, I've got to go and tell a doctor that I'm, I'm like down and stressed. And, and it, it wasn't like I was suicidal. I was absolutely not. But it, it really got to the point where I thought if I was told you're going to die now, it'd have been like, okay, fine, whatever. It'd be probably be easier. And to, to have those thoughts at the same time knowing, but you've got such a good life. Like I know my life is great. Even then with where, and I had a lot more stresses than I do now. Well, um, <laughs> You know, so you do get worried you're going to get laughed out of the doctor surgery. Mm. Do you know what? This is something that I hear quite a lot from people, especially um, because I'm a community manager in an app for neurodivergent people. And I remember that was exactly the same fear as I had, just, or pride. Pride got in the way. It took me a couple of years before I went to the doctor to to say, you know, it's not traditional anxiety that I have. I don't stress about the small stuff, but it's just that overwhelming feeling of overwhelm all the time, you know? And um, and yeah, it, that's the thing. It's just that pride of actually having to to, to say it out loud because you feel like it's, it's a form of weakness. But all I can say, and I'm not a medical professional, is life is a million fucking times better on surgery. <laughs> yeah, and, I mean, I, and, I uh, that Thank you, Big Pharma, because I am on Telepram. Not, obviously, every per person's journey is different, right? Mm. So, you know, I did uh, cognitive behavior therapy at the same time as starting on meds, and I have weekly counseling. So, you know, that's my way of processing. But, um, you know, just wanted to say that this girl was fucking brave because she agreed to go and get professional help. Um, and she went to uh, see a therapist, counselor, whatever, um, three times before her death. And um, she never indicated suicidal tendencies. So the counselor has um, the therapist, the psychiatrist, the psychologist. I don't know what, what kind of counseling she went for exactly. But um, that person said that she never indicated any suicidal tendencies. Um, he offered her some meds for sleeping and to take and for taking the edge off. Um, ironically, with a lot of anxiety meds and depression meds, the side effect is suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. So there was talk of that. Um, but these were the only drugs found in her system and not an excess of them. So she had started taking them. And, and taking them as prescribed, right? So what happened on the day of her death? Um, so on the 26th of January, 2011, there was a storm and Ellen left work early because the school was closed early. Uh, you know, like Philadelphia, that kind of coast when they have like storms and snow and whatever, it's brutal, right? Mm. So everyone was sent home early to make sure that they got home safe before the storm fully hit. Um, Sam, her fiance, saw Ellie at home. They lived together. And then he went to the gym at 445. From the 911 call I heard, which you know is just great. Oh no. Oh God. Yeah. It sounds like the gym was part of the ap apartment complex. Okay. You know, when they have like these huge apartment complex yeah. that have like gym and a grocery store and laundry room and all sorts. Um, so it sounds like it was either nearby or part of the apartment complex. At 5 p.m. that evening, her fiancé came back from the gym and found the front door wedged shut. The swing lock was put on from the inside of the apartment. So I was like, what the fuck's a swing lock, right? Mm -hmm. Are you like, what the fuck's a swing lock? Um, I'm thinking, is it one of those big Yale locks? Or no? I'll show you. Oh, the chain lock. It, it kind of like, um, let me show you. I mean, I'm not saying this is a specific one, but something like this. The fuck is that? Contraption. You see? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, the locks that you flip over. Okay. Okay. Anyways, it's like a little lock that without a key that was closed from the inside. Mm hmm. Sam couldn't open the door because of this lock. Um, so he's texting Ellie, calling her, asking her to open the door because he knows she's inside. 
there's no response. So he keeps texting for like an hour, you know? Um, he found one of the building maintenance security people, whatever, the super. It's always the super, isn't it, mm -hmm. in American um, shows and whatever. And asked them to open the door, but he said no because it was against their policy, which is weird. I don't know whether that means he wasn't registered as living there or what. So Sam goes and breaks the door down. He finds Ellie on the floor in the kitchen, unresponsive, covered in blood. So he calls the police. Um, while on the phone, they tell him to perform CPR. And that's when he sees the knife. Um, so the emergency responder tells him to stop doing CPR. The first responders and the police arrive within seven minutes, which sounds pretty good. But she's pronounced deceased at 6.40 p.m. She had been stabbed 20 times. And 10 of the times were on the back of her head and neck. So bear that in mind. That's fucking important. Stabbed 20 times, mm -hmm. half of the times in her back. But after a very, very short investigation, the police determine it was suicide. Oh, come on. Especially, How? she wouldn't be able to do that to herself. Well, um, their points were that um, the door had been locked from the inside and latched from the inside. She had anxiety. She had made that phone call to her parents about how she was struggling. And there was no sign of disturbance outside of the kitchen. No sign of forced entry apart from where Sam broke in. Mm -hmm. um, and also like there was a, a balcony but no sign of entry from there. And, and there was snow on the balcony because remember there was a storm coming in and there was no footprints or anything in that snow. So they're saying there was there's no possibility of someone else being in that apartment. She must have killed herself by stabbing herself 20 times. And they didn't suspect the fiance. Let mm -hmm. me go into more details of the ins and outs of this investigation. But my first reaction, and I think yours as well, is like, for a start, stabbing yourself 20 times anyways does not seem like, same as with Phoebe, it doesn't seem like the most obvious choice of method to kill yourself, you know, especially when you enough, have access to prescription enough, drugs. Yeah, and it's also hard enough giving yourself an injection, let alone stabbing yourself that many times. And then the know? fact that half of them are in the back of her head, mm. it just seems so unlikely, right? And mm -hmm. I'll go into more details on that in a bit. So there's a fresh bowl of blueberries and freshly peeled oranges on the counter, mm -hmm. which to me tells me, are you really going to make yourself a little snack and then decide to kill yourself? Mm. Right? So the pathologist confirmed that she was stabbed 20 times with the same knife, which was found in the kitchen, and that 10 of the wounds were in the back of her head and her neck, and that the fatal blow was to her chest. So, it's also not a typical way to commit suicide if you aren't going to use a knife. If you're not going to use what? A knife. Yeah. So, and I'm going to, I did a bit of research in how, because stabbing yourself seems like a very odd choice in terms mm -hmm. of choosing to take your own life. Like with Phoebe Hansjuk, they had prescription drugs, which seems like a much more obvious, much more guaranteed mm -hmm. way. Um, this just seems such an unguaranteed, violent, unpleasant way to end your life right but police also couldn't find any evidence that anyone else had been in the flat no open windows no shoe prints um the flat was on the sixth floor so no well. wounds? the oh. police found no fingerprints or dna that weren't ellie's or i presume sam's um police asked the building security for access to the cctv there was a camera in the main lobby there was no evidence of anyone going in and out of the complex that shouldn't have been there. I mean, it could still be someone who lived in the building mm -hmm. or lived in the flat. Well, because Sam it's was... generally going to be somebody you know, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Unless it's and as we know, usually the partner. Mm -hmm. But Sam was never considered a suspect, mainly because his alibis checked out. So they had like key fobs, electronic key fobs, in you know this complex so they could according to the timeline that he himself dictated which you know 
they're going by his word oh he, so they his didn't movements check they didn't check there's no way to check the timings of the key like the there's timings to check the keys but he's saying yeah i left ellie at this time and she was fine and then mm. you know um he they also say he had no motive because you know they were getting married etc cetera, etc cetera. But we also know that sometimes the trigger in domestic violence is a big life-changing event. Losing mm -hmm. your job, moving, getting married, getting pregnant. Those are unfortunately the times when victims of domestic violence are at their most vulnerable. So, and if she's feeling the stress of the wedding, he might also have been, allegedly. Mm -hmm. Ellie's autopsy results come in and change everything. It was noted that she had eight wounds to her chest alone, ranging from small to four inches. She would have been in so much pain or even paralyzed or unconscious from the back wounds because of these injuries, they, they severed much of her nervous system. So at some point in the stabbings, she wouldn't have been able to continue if it was her supposedly <laughs> doing it to herself. Mm -hmm. And didn't so have neighbors here. No. So even if we could explain why she would do this to herself, how did she stab herself in the back with such force, mm -hmm. potentially paralyzing herself or making herself unconscious and then inflicting the final blow to her chest? Yeah. You know? That's, that's what I mean. You, if you do it 20 times to yourself, I don't think you could. No, I think like even if you thought it was a good idea in the first place, you'd be like, maybe I need to rethink this and try mm. another method. Again, she had access to prescription drugs, which mm -hmm. I'm not advocating this, but it just seems like a much more obvious way. Mm -hmm. um, one prosecutor looking at the case noticed that even though she was slumped in a seated position, so imagine this, she slumped in a seated position against the base cabinets in the kitchen. There was a line of blood that went from her mouth to her, um, or her, her mouth nose area, to the back of her ear, which implied that at some point she was lying on her back for a while oh. and then moved upright. Okay. So for the blood to flow in this direction, she must have been lying on her back for a bit, mm -hmm. but she was found sitting up. There was also a towel next to her that was spotless, which just seems unusual. Um, <laughs> also, I had a quick Google there's loads of videos online about how to open and close swing locks from oh. the outside. Oh. Credit cards and so forth. And like I said, I don't know exactly which one they had or whatever, but it is usually possible. I mean, it's not, a, it's, it's a fiddly little lock. It's to stop opportunists. It's not going to stop mm. anyone determined to break in. It's very rare for the police to an announce the cause of death, in this case, suicide, before the autopsy results come back. Um, and also the crime scene was not secured as a result because if it's announced as if the police decide almost instantly it's suicide, they're not treating the crime scene like a homicide where clues need to, where it needs to be preserved and they need to get forensics and this, that and the other. For example, they did no luminal testing at all. Mm -hmm. and, and didn't they have forensic people checking out the blood spatters and all the rest no that's what i'm saying they did none of that that's because crazy. the police decided it was a suicide mm. and we had this many times where it's like just consider it a homicide until you get evidence otherwise because it's mm -hmm. too late to go back and do this shit mm -hmm. and there were suspicions by some people that there had already been a cleanup job like this weirdly clean towel right mm -hmm. next to this very bloody scene before 911 was called Mm -hmm. So they didn't do any testing anywhere else, you know, was the bathroom used to clean up or nothing. Yeah, she because that's one thing I was <clears throat> watching in Stephen Keogh's new show, Secrets of a Murder Detective, that they would normally check the police um, in, to see if somebody had done a cleanup job in the bathrooms, check the, the pipes to check for blood, you know? None of that, because yeah. the police on scene very quickly decided... Must be a suicide. We don't need to do any of that. Nothing That's to see crazy. here. Crazy. But then, like, the autop autopsy results come back, like I said, saying that these wounds are very difficult to inflict on yourself, almost impossible. She also had previous injuries, which implied she'd been injured in the days before her death. Mm -hmm. Now, they could just be from being a teacher. I know that you've told us several times where you've, like, got in between students. <laughs> Having a punch up, yeah. 
you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but was it possible that Sam was becoming abusive? Mm -hmm. Did he have a change of circumstance would impact the relationship? The police found no evidence of this, but I would like to argue that a fucking wedding is a change of circumstance and an added pressure in a relationship. Mm -hmm. It also, I'm not saying this is what happened in this case, but I've seen it time and time again where people view their partner differently when they become engaged and when they're about to be married. In their mind, now that we're engaged, we act differently as a couple, mm -hmm. right? We've mm -hmm. seen this time and time again, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe things that he, in her behaviors that he found acceptable when they were just dating, he does not like in his fiance future wife. Mm. It's possible. Um, the medical examiner finished the autopsy re report by listing the death as a homicide. So the medical examiner said that that was his, his professional opinion, that it was a homicide. This was the same day as her funeral. So the police instantly rule it as a, de decide in their minds as a suicide and they treat it as such that meaning they don't investigate properly. But when the autopsy result does come back, I guess week or two weeks later, it's deemed a homicide. But again, so do, it's does too that late to go back. But does does what the autopsy report say override the police's decision? Yeah, what yeah, because the police were just um that was just their their belief or whatever. But the thing so does is, that mean that they have to reopen the case and look into it? In theory, yeah. But again, it's too late to go back and do those forensic yeah. checks, right? Mm -hmm. Too much time has passed. Why the Sam's fuck still living. Secured? Why didn't they secure the crime scene until the autopsy report was back? That's in theory what they're supposed to do. But because, and you know, sometimes there will be a case where it's quite blatantly suicide. But I would argue that this scenario is strange enough that they should oh. have left it open-ended until they got the report and treated it like a potential homicide. Mm -hmm. Not a police officer, but. So Ellie's funeral was the same day as this autopsy report came out. So guaranteed the parents and the and Sam, the fiance, would have been told about the result. It was held at Bethel Temple in Harrisburg, because you won't be surprised that um, they are Jewish. <laughs> you know, um, what are the names here? We've got Ellie Greenberg and Sam Goldberg. Um, so yeah, they are having the funeral in a temple. The dad must have been emotional because he would have got the results of this autopsy and it's his daughter's fucking funeral. So he confronts Sam at the funeral and says, you know, you're the prime suspect now. Sam apparently started crying. So it's now too late to retrieve evidence. Everything has been cleaned up. Um, and Sam had been left with her laptops and her phone, for example. So anything they did in hindsight mm. now, like retrospectively, retroactively, people will just say, his defense will just say, oh, well, you know, too much time has passed. You can't say that that's from the day mm -hmm. or fuck knows. So her case is passed on to the homicide team now that it's officially a homicide. That team then rejected as a homicide, saying it was a suicide. Why? What was their agenda to like not? Do you know what? I'm going to argue safe. that it's because they could see that they fucked up the investigation, allegedly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And that they're not going to get very far with it. And it's going to be a case that's unsolved because they know they don't have the opportunity to do all the things. Like I've been watching a lot of uh, First 48 on Crime and Investigation Channel. And apparently, if you don't get a credible lead, like a good lead within the first 48 hours, your chance of convicting the perpetrator for a homicide is halved. Mm. So this we're now talking Why is that? weeks. Because, Why is that? Because um, it's just the critical time. Mm -hmm. If you don't manage to get that information soon, if you don't get anything in forensics, if you don't get eyewitnesses. You know, all those people that like, didn't play it safe, and didn't want to reopen it. Are they not worried that he's going to do it again? I know? I know. Like you do. And then it, with these cases, how do you fucking sleep, right? Mm. So um, Ellie was struggling with her mental health. And there was no evidence of anyone else involved. No break-ins or whatever. So two days after it was deemed a homicide by the medical examiner, it was then changed back to suicide. I mean, the poor family as well. You they, know? How did they respond to it? Did they 
lobby to reopen the case? What did they do? Let me tell you. So one journalist said she had never heard of a case where the police disagreed publicly with the medical examiner and the autopsy. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, they're basically going against science here, mm -hmm. you know? Um, the police interviewed Ellie's friend, Debbie, and she said that Ellie had become reserved in the last few weeks, which lines up with what the parents had said about how she had been different in the in the weeks, months leading mm -hmm. up to her death. When Debbie would ask her about it, Ellie would say she didn't want to talk about it. Debbie worked with Ellie and didn't think it was work related. And remember again, that teacher that took over Ellie's mm -hmm. job when Ellie passed away mm -hmm. said that it didn't look like she was struggling with her workload in any case mm -hmm. um again that's not to say it's not anxiety or depression but also could be abuse stalking something else right her friends also reported to parents that um to her parents that sam was getting more controlling so her friends are saying this mm -hmm. um but the psychiatrist remember who said that she never talked about um uh, suicidal ideations or suicidal thoughts also said that she never complained about her relationship with Sam. Now, I want to just say that she's had three sessions only at this point. Mm -hmm. And I have weekly counseling with the same counselor for the last almost 10 years now. And sometimes it still takes me a long time to warm up to telling her something, you yeah. know? And, and I can imagine if she got so used to concealing things about her relationship, it doesn't mean just because she's seeing a counselor that she's going to open up about that, especially about starting. everything right away. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I'm just, I'm not saying this is what happened, but the fact that she hasn't talked about something in only three sessions to me does not mean that there wasn't another problem, you know, mm -hmm. three sessions is nothing. Um, so police arranged to have the cause of death changed for from homicide back to suicide. Um, there's no records of this meeting where they they made this decision. Um, so there's no formal public record of why they did this. Um, Ellie's family were clearly not happy with this decision to make it uh, uh, to register it as a suicide. So they hired detectives. One of them described the crime scene as a blitz attack. And that's, you know, that's a professional who would have seen other mm. crime scenes, right? Mm -hmm. um, they they hired, the family hired, of the medical examiner who did, who, again, another a medical examiner to the stars. He did the autopsy on JFK, Anna Nicole Smith, John Benet Ramsey, um, and a bunch of others. They hired uh, this medical examiner to look at the case. This is what I found super interesting. He said suicide by multiple stab wounds was incredibly rare. And rare for a female to choose stabbing as a method in any case. So super rare for a female to choose it as a, a method for uh, killing themselves. And to have multiple stab wounds. Mm. Almost unheard of. And in the back, even if you were to do it to yourself, you probably wouldn't put it, and this, you know, stab yourself yeah. in the neck or the back. And this is the interesting thing also. When people do use this method, they usually take off their clothes. Mm. She didn't take off her clothes. She was making a fucking smoothie by the looks of it, you know? Mm. Um, and then also people said it was impossible to stab yourself in the back of the neck like she supposedly did. Um, one PI, one private investigator, found out that Sam called his parents and his uncle before calling 911. This, I don't find, that fact, I don't find that weird. Okay, when I had the police come to the door, I couldn't even remember who my insurance company were, mm -hmm. you know? So, and that was a nothing event. So, um, I can imagine panicking and just calling your mom, mm -hmm. right? But, who do you think his uncle is? Uh. His uncle is a man called James C. Schwartzman, who is a high-profile lawyer. Mm-hmm. They were already on the scene by the time the first responders arrived. Remember, the first responders arrived in seven minutes. Mm -hmm. Also, the first responders were never interviewed by the police, which I feel like is the most one of the most mm -hmm. obvious things. 
So just like, okay, so now we find out he's well-connected, influential, got a high-profile lawyer in the family, and that they were on the scene before the police were even called. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, it's, it's literally like Phoebe Hanchuk's boyfriend. I know, that's why I always got confused between these cases, because there's so mm -hmm. many, even down to the fact of it being an apartment complex, messes mm -hmm. my mind a bit. And that's why I was really happy to have this opportunity to separate the cases out in my mind anyway. So five years after Ellie's death, remember she was um, she was found dead, uh, 2011. They found out that there was actually a bit of Ellie's spinal cord saved as evidence, the family and the PI. They asked for this to be tested again because if the spinal cord was severed by the first wounds to the back of her neck, she wouldn't then have been for in the sure it was homicide. Because mm -hmm. if you're paralyzed, there's no way you can then stab yourself yeah. in the front. Mm -hmm. It was declared that the neuropathologist says that there wasn't sufficient damage to the spinal cord to render her paralyzed or unconscious. So this official neuropathologist said that it was possible she would still have been functioning enough to potentially stab herself in the front and, and deal the final blow. When the parents asked to see this report, though, the report was never shared. Neither was any evidence that a doctor was paid to do this autopsy at all. The neuropathologist that was quoted as having done this assessment was contacted directly by a journalist. She couldn't remember the case, which is weird because it's quite a unique case, and she couldn't find the bill for the work. So it didn't happen. So she hadn't invoiced the police or whoever mm -hmm. yeah. for this assessment. And she so didn't did remember. It she... Okay, so it didn't happen. Right? I mean, the woman mm. doesn't remember it. She didn't bill for it. There's no mm. report to be shared. Mm -hmm. Also, there was evidence of strangulation and fingertips and scratches all around her and bruises on her whole body. And remember, there was also the um, injuries that had been found that were uh, several days old on her body mm -hmm. the greenbergs uh, ellie's parents were finally allowed to look at the files the police files but they were told they had to come alone not take pictures and not call anyone and it's like they're none neither of the parents have any kind of legal or po police background so you're going to prevent, present them with a whole bunch of police reports and evidence and whatever and expect them to make sense of any of it? Mm. And also, can you imagine looking through those files when they are about your own daughter's death? Mm -hmm. So so his, his uncle had this much influence over the police. Well, let's discuss that at the end, right? Um, the father said that he gained absolutely no extra knowledge from looking at the files. It's like, he's... He's not familiar with that type. I'm sure they're using shorthand. I'm sure they're mm. using different codes and and you, you know what I mean? Like and and he would have been flustered and flabbergasted and there would have been probably quite a bit to go through. So the police said they are going to keep the suicide ru ruling because they said there's no reason to change it to homicide. They said they sound they found searches on the laptops for painless suicide. Which to me doesn't even make sense because there's no mm. way that stabbing yourself 20 times mm. would have come up as an option for painless suicide. Also, they couldn't say who made those searches. Mm -hmm. And also, a lot of the searches led to, this is weird, Christian ev evangelical sites. That doesn't actually surprise me that, like, if you're searching for suicide-related information in the States, that it would take you to these, mm -hmm. like, evangelical sites. Yeah. But the thing is, like I said, they are Jewish. So she wouldn't have spent much time in this, you know what I mean, rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. um, and also, why wasn't this information about the searches revealed years earlier? These searches stopped, by the way, three weeks before her death anyways. Mm -hmm. And and coincides with the time that she was seeing the shrink, the counselor, the psychiatrist, whatever, who mentioned that she wasn't having suicidal thoughts. And again... She only had three sessions. That's not enough time to build up so much trust with anyone to sort of reveal everything. But it just doesn't sound right, does it? Mm. It doesn't sit right. 
Ellie's family took the case to court to have it relisted as a homicide. Um, this was as recent as September 2023. So they are wow. still 12 <gasps> plus years fighting to have this case converted to a homicide so that it will actually be investigated. But the court decided to keep it as a suicide. And where the so, fuck's this guy been all these years? So basically, I will tell you that. So basically, even if there are police officers who want to investigate the case because they don't think it sounds right, they can't because it's not an open investigation. It's a mm. suicide. It's, you know, case closed. Sam, her fiance, is now married with two kids in New York. And Ellie's family have vowed to keep fighting for Ellie. They actually want documentaries to be made to keep the memory of Ellie alive and hopefully bring her justice. So I don't know what impact this podcast will have, but at the very least, it will, you know, bring her case to the attention of more people. Mm. But I mean, how that the poor fuck? family, you know, it's just so sad because <clears throat> to have to, you know, they're never going to come to terms with the fact that their daughter was killed i don't no. think that's something you come and to the thing is with. but it... then they're never going to be able to have conclusion you know that they're never going to be able to get the answers that they need to be able to and the thing is process. it's not like it was investigated thoroughly and then ruled a suicide mm. it wasn't investigated at all mm -hmm. apart and from knowing like, that this son of a bitch is is living his life when alleged son of a bitch Mm. I don't know how they cope with that. I mean, and the thing is, we don't even know if it was him because we don't really know if there was any other potentials. I mean, maybe there was a creepy stalker in our complex building. They said that there wasn't anyone who wasn't meant to be there. She could mm -hmm. have had problems with neighbors. Maybe that's why she was being weird the last couple of weeks, months, you know? Mm -hmm. We don't know. And we never will. Because even if they do rule it as a homicide, well, if her family... Push and push and push. If and it, they if, make it a, and they rule it as a homicide. It's so far past. Yeah. You, you know, know the actual fiance, incident that how fiance, will they ever find evidence to prove anything? No. Sorry, because her fiance. If, if, if he was innocent, he would have wanted it properly investigated. Yeah, he I don't know whether it, he so. was on, you know, what he said publicly about this ruling of suicide. Mm -hmm. I didn't find any evidence that he was pushing for it to be converted to homicide. Because if he didn't believe it was a suicide and he thought, and, and he wasn't guilty, then he would want this to be surely investigated if it could have been somebody in the building, a stalker, you know? Yeah. So the fact that he didn't push for that also highlights his potential. Um, but, you know, guilt. was there the opportunity for him to kill her in an argument? And then panic and call his mom and dad and his lawyer uncle and do a full cleanup and taint the evidence so and then call mm. the emergency services. There was definitely time for that. Mm. So Not do we think that's he what he did? Gym. Do we know uh, if he went to, do we know if he went he actually did go to the gym? Um, I think that they found that he had gone to the gym. He had left, mm. but like you know, the timeline of when he last saw her alive. And then you have that hour of him trying to get into the building, into the flat. Mm -hmm. You know, who knows how long he was actually trying to get into the flat and mm -hmm. whether he was yeah. actually in the flat or not, you know? Yeah. Wow. It's mental. When you think it couldn't be clearer cut, when you think that it couldn't be more obvious and people get away, it's crazy. So you and see why like, the the Phoebe Hansjuk case mm, reminds me of there's so oh many similarities. God. I it's mean, both tragic, but just like when you think, how the fuck, mm -hmm. how the actual fuck? Yeah. This is one of the craziest ones, you know, because <sighs> this is one of the craziest ones where you think, how the fuck did the guy get off? Because it just there's nothing. How did he? About... How did he avoid even being a suspect? Mm -hmm. that's the crazy thing he yeah. wasn't even a suspect that got cleared i mean everything from the friends saying that he was controlling to ellie her mental health suffering in the weeks leading up to it to her having wounds on her body pre-death i mean it's just so 
clear to me, again, with no actual qualifications in the field, that there's enough there to at least investigate as a mm. homicide in the first instance. And once they decided not to, right off the bat, that was all the evidence lost. So all those police officers, I don't know if it's that many or whether it's just a few, um, who decide just to shelve this case, are they not themselves worried that they could be fired for negligence further down the line? Well, it's going to be, it's not going to be a whole group of police officers that made this decision. I presume it's someone in charge that's made this decision. Mm -hmm. I presume who's quite close to this high powered lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. And then but, how is um, it going to look on them if there's another, you know, if he commits another crime? I don't, oh God. I mean, honestly, it's just all the clues and evidence seems to be there. It's, it's, I can't imagine how her parents will come to terms with it, you know, not just yeah. a death, but just, you know. You know, already happened. their daughter's been, you know, brutally killed. You know, she suffered a, a brutal death and they have no answers because it was just deemed a suicide with no mm. investigation, minimal. Oh, there's mm. no, there's no footprint on the balcony, it must be a suicide, you know? Mm. God, oh, that's that's a really sad one. It is a really, really sad one because mm -hmm. it just feels like if they had pulled their finger out at the time, it feels like one that possibly could have been solved mm -hmm. quite quickly. Mm -hmm. Because if you're saying that there's no one that was in that building that wasn't meant to be in that building and they hadn't come in through the balcony, well, then you've got like a, what are they called? Like a closed room, um, Kate, you know what I mean? You've got like a... a limited amount of suspects mm. so i just don't know why they wouldn't have you know played it safe and got a forensics team to check the blood splatter to check whether there'd been a cleanup job to check the bathroom pipes or the kitchen pipes for blood do you know what i mean mm -hmm. i don't get it yeah but no that, so, that, and you know that, if they didn't find any dna or fingerprints that didn't belong to ellie or sam well what the fuck does that tell you then yeah yeah god it's crazy that if this is a case of him being well connected and his uncle being very influential it really is crazy how that people have that power yeah how influential some people can be either and how either... corrupt mm -hmm. certain people in the authorities could potentially be oh god it just reminds me i always say it, but it reminds me of the murdochs after watching that documentary you just think god if you're well connected and you're corrupt you're fine yeah so yeah that one is heartbreaking they all are but that one oh my again, god yeah it's, that... it's not even unsolved because it's not an open investigation that's yeah. the heartbreaking thing it's not like oh if we get new evidence we might be able to solve this one no one's looking for new evidence i mean the parents are fingers crossed they managed to find something with their pis and whatnot they're obviously still fighting but like you know, when they do have a lead, they get this bullshit lies, allegedly, like this fake neuropathologist report, mm -hmm. allegedly fake, you know? So mm -hmm. how are they meant to do anything? Oh, it's just horrendous. I think we need to lighten the mood now because I'm thoroughly depressed by that one and angry. I'm really angry. That one makes me angry. Mm. Not just because someone was someone's life got taken, but everything that followed is just fucking disgusting. The amount of people complicit is, is also also makes me yeah. angry. Yeah. So people's pulse. Well, on the plus side, Deanna, you picked a great topic. Good. Uh, basically, anything nineties winner is what we yes. are yeah. learning. Yeah. So we realized the financial questions weren't a winner. <laughs> but anything 90s and bodily function related and yeah. we're doing okay <laughs> we're on a learning curve and we're listening to our our listeners so so today's people's pals topic was favorite 90s show so sorry <laughs> can i tell you mine yeah yeah um without hands down my so-called life oh that one's come up okay 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 that one's come up hold on jordan catalano I think her name was Ray, the cool, quirky friend. Yeah, fucking with the blonde loved hair. Her. Oh, yeah, yeah, loved her. The super cute gay friend. Yeah. Adorable, loved him. 
Actually, Claire Danes' character was the one I liked least. Yeah, true. She she had less personality than the I, I like her, her parents <laughs> more yeah. than her. <laughs> so you're gonna say yours at the end, are you? So well, you know what? As per usual, I haven't come up with mine yet because you know that someone's gonna say it. Yeah, reading through everyone else's, I agree with everyone else's. Okay, so first we have Susie. So Susie says, I used to love Quantum Leap. Remember? Sam! Oh, God. TV was so good. Mm -hmm. The X-Files. That one scared the shit out of me. That's not on my list. It scared me. Even no, but that was, that was such a good show. I used to love freaking myself yeah. out. I, I was much more tolerant of scary shit when I was younger. So I used to, yeah. like, freak oh, myself yeah. out by watching oh, TV. Oh, I used to read Stephen King in primary school. I mean, mm -hmm. but yeah, X-Files, even if I hear the music now, it freaks me out. Then oh, she says the big breakfast. Oh, I fucking do you love remember? It. Yes, I do. And I remember um, Paula Yates on it. And yeah, I remember on the bed and sick and yeah. sag. Yeah, yeah. And, and her interview with who's the guy from NXS she married? I remember her interview. Yeah, Michael with, Hutchinson. Um, and and then also yeah. the best era was Denise Van Outen and Johnny yeah. Vaughn hosting it. That yeah, was, I mean, oh. that show, we used to watch it before going to school. It used to set you up for the day just right. Do you know what's funny? It was like a morning show, but it was so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and also, do you know what? Do you remember they used to show um, Biker Mice from Mars? Yes, but it was so weird because it was almost like an adult show, right? But it was on first thing in the morning and then you had Zig and Zag and you're like, why is that like a something for kids. I know, it was, it was bizarre. Weird. It was bizarre. It, it was bizarre, and it was just so 90s, and I loved it. And then Susie says Friends, of course. Mm -hmm. And then the Young Indiana Chronicles. I don't, I don't, did we watch that? We never watched that, no. No, I don't think we did. I was aware of it, but I don't think we watched it. Oh, Memory Lane. Okay, then we got... Oh, then we got, sorry, 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 sorry. Then we got, oh, Karen. We got Karen in the, in the state. She says, okay, she said, this is tough for me. My children were little. I worked nights and husband worked during the day. So I did not watch much TV. So the only show I did watch on the regular, and she said, we taped it with a, with a laughing face. It was Lois and Clark. Yes. Yeah. With Terry Hatcher and Dean Cain. That was such a good yeah. series. I used to watch that on Saturdays. That was on TV on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. oh yeah so I love the superhero stuff others I watched um episodes here and there and she said wings I don't remember that one yeah I remember it but we never really watched it Frasier Frasier yeah yeah our dad watches that now he's discovering mm -hmm. 90 shows now <laughs> uh, when I... huh mad about you that sounds familiar. that was um I want to say Holly Hunter but it's not Helen Hunt, Helen Hunt or Holly Hunter, one of those. Oh, I know. And I she, be like, yeah. Yeah. And her partner and their dog lived in oh. a New York flat. Yeah. Okay. We, we, I, think I watched Helen it Hunt. occasionally. Holly Hunter is from the piano. Let oh, me just quickly Google. Helen Helen Hunt, we think. Yeah. Holly Hunter was in the piano and fuck it how that film. Yeah. I've Helen Hunt. Seen, yeah. I've never seen the film The Piano, but I've heard about it. Holly her. Hunter was in um, Copycat. Oh, yes. And then Karen says, my husband, however, could probably recite every line of every episode of Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Oh, I knew Seinfeld one. was going to come up. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Forgot about it, actually. Okay, so then oh, <laughs> we've got Lucy B. And she's in Sweet Valley High, which, oh, my God, one of my all-time favorites. I, I read every one of those books. I even got told off in primary for reading those books instead of proper books. <laughs> <laughs> but I love yep. it and then she said I wanted their jeep so badly and you know what's funny I thought oh my god I have a jeep I have twins and I have a jeep did I manifest <laughs> you manifested you're living the life yeah um and then yeah she says god I love them I can still sing the theme tune word for word I oh I do remember the theme tune I'm not gonna sing it wait I, I need to I need to remember it hang on hang on I need to YouTube Sweet Valley High theme song. Yes, that's what I want. Oh. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> boop, 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 doo, doo, doo. 
<laughs> That's the one. <laughs> Reflection. Okay, enough singing. I'm going to cut that all out. <laughs> okay. So oh, wait, Jamie... wait, wait. I can't hear you because I've got, sorry, that was coming out of my speakers. Hang on. Uh... I hear you. Okay, speak. Can, 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 can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then Jamie says, oh, my so-called life. Yes, Jamie. And Heartbreak High. Yeah. Remember, you used to really uh -huh. fancy that guy. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> the one Rimmer. where the white wife beater and he had like um, short brown hair. Oh, no. I was thinking the guy with long hair. River, sweet. Um, no, Heartbreak High. Didn't they make a remake of that? Yeah. It's on Netflix. Like, currently, I think, on Netflix. I haven't seen it. And yeah. Again, Rivers. Rivers is the one I, I liked from uh, that. I don't, I don't even know. <gasps> oh, I forgot about that guy. Forgot about yeah. him. Yeah. Okay, so then, uh, commentary Karen says friends, but I enjoyed men behaving badly. <gasps> men behaving badly. Name? Something Morrissey. What's his name? Neil. Neil Morrissey, and then the other one that played Martin Clunes. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Miss Life is that the one with um with the, the guy, guy who guy? The went on to do Teachers, name? and then he went on to do Walking Dead. Yes. Okay. 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 I remember. Uh, and, oh, and she says they don't. JV don't make TV like that anymore, right? You're fucking right. You're fucking right. They don't make anything like we did in the nineties. Then we've got oh, uh, Andrew you. Lincoln. Sorry, is his name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Andrew Lincoln. Yeah. Then our fave Sam says Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's coming out with a great ones. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry, my table's falling apart. Sorry. Our favorite Sam says Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yes, yes. legendary. Keenan and Cal. Oh, I used to love that one. Mm -hmm. Sister, sister. <laughs> We're talking. Are are we talking Nickelodeon here? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. California Dreams. Oh my God. Oh, yes. California. Yeah. And another great like theme tune. They were in the band, right? They were in the band, and they had a song. Fifteen, not old enough to be free. <laughs> And I remember the blonde girl, there was an episode where she was doing steroids. I remember steroids was such a big thing in the 90s. Right? I know. We just, like, if you watched any 90s shows, you'd assume that we got proposition with steroids all the time. No one mm. ever has offered me there steroids. One, remember Saved by the Bell? Oh, that's one of my favorites, Saved by the Bell. Saved by the Bell, <laughs> yeah. episode where Jesse... Speed, doesn't she? Jessie, so she can... No, it was caffeine! <laughs> I think it was supposed to be speed, but then they changed it to caffeine that she was taking. So that she could do her homework. Oh my god, okay. Speed We've all been there, Jesse. <laughs> so, and then London's Burning, oh my god, you used to, used to read London's London. Burning, John Alford. Yeah, I yes. used to love that. Um, what an unlikely heartthrob he was, huh? Yeah. Just goes to show you, you don't need to be hot to be a hot fireman. <laughs> You just have to be a fireman. <laughs> You've been framed. We used to love that. We used to love that. And now I can't that bear. Is rare. That's yeah, but that's where I love of uh, laughing when people fall over comes from. No, I know. I, I still like the videos, but it's all the in-between and all the transitions and whatever. It just cringes me out. And the voiceover uh, yeah, yeah. and the, yeah. Fools and horses. Mm -hmm. Only fools and horses, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Um bottom, I think bottom was the nineties. Yo, that's the next one. Sam. Hey, Me Sam. and Sam. Shame we fucking didn't know you in the 90s, huh, Sam? Because we would have... We would have hung out. Oh. And then Royal Family. Royal Family. We never got into that. I remember Two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Oh. That was good. Pretty sure that was 90s. I think it overlapped into the early 2000s. Yeah, but it was we'll good. count it. We'll count it. Okay. Oh, oh and I want to say, I want to say Hollyoaks. <gasps> yeah. Early Hollyoaks. Hollyoaks yeah. was very different back in the day. It was much more edgy than it is. Yeah, know. everything because it, was edgier. No, but you know what? Yeah, because everything was kind of the first time it'd been done. We didn't have a hundred million TV channels and shows and streaming services, whatever. So, like Hollyoaks was and the Heartbreak High and stuff like that. They were the first time you saw like gritty mm. 
teenagers talking about sex and doing drugs and yeah. you remember Hollyoaks opened up with one of their friends dying from taking ecstasy because yeah. obviously that was another thing we thought in the 90s that anyone that took ecstasy was going to drop dead wow because of Leah Betts remember yeah exactly so um it was genuinely like groundbreaking because it was the first time all these things have been done oh see there's some other great ones coming up all right go so on. we've got Carly who says top five fresh prints yeah is there anyone who doesn't know all the words to Fresh Prince, like the theme tune? I think everyone knows. We're not going to do it. No. And then Fun House. Wasn't yes. that with the guy with a mullet? At Sharp. Yeah. Yes. Oh. And the twins. Also oh. inappropriate. He had two blonde twin assistants, but they were like fucking hot. Like, oh, I don't remember. Too hot and too sexy in their <laughs> uh, attire and demeanor. <laughs> To be on a kid's show. It was clearly like for the dads that have to watch Carly, Fun House with the kids. Carly mentioned another one that is one of your favorites. With Richard O'Brien. Oh. Crystal May. Yes. The excitement. The excitement of that da -da -da -da. show. Oh, that music was, oh, it brings me back. It brings I know. me back. That music. Oh. Da -da -da -da. I feel all cozy. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, I know. I oh, cozy. Gladiators. It's it's coming, D. It's coming. Yeah. And can I just say the remake of Gladiators? Because they remade it a couple of years ago and it was it was like all American y show busy, whatever. And it was it was not the same. It was not good, in my yeah. humble opinion. They've remade it. It's just finished. It's on BBC iPlayer and it is just like the original, almost identical to the original. And so oh. it's just perfection. It was a joy to watch. I might even rewatch it. Okay, and then Carly says two cartoons we used to watch. Ren and Stimpy. Oh Ren and Stimpy. It's so funny how that was ever a kid's cartoon. And then Rocco's Modern Life. I Rocco's love Modern Life. One. Yeah. I used to love also, Cow and Chicken. I don't remember that one as much. But yeah, Rocco's Modern Life was just yeah. amazing. Also, Rude Dog and the Dweebs. Oh, yes. do you know what? Can we do one specifically about cartoons? Yes. Childhood cartoons. I think yes. that should be the next one. Yeah. Then... Okay, so Julia, oh, beautiful Julia says, Silent Witness, of course. Mm -hmm. I need to get into that show because everyone's telling me it's good. Okay, <laughs> so I actually recently started watching it. I got super excited because you know when I you saw find... a lot of autopsy stuff. So I, yeah. I, I watched one episode. It was a lot of autopsies. So I wasn't too Okay, because the woman is a fucking forensic, um, yeah. you know, pathologist. But I didn't stop watching it for that reason. I started from the beginning. I got super excited because I know it's meant to be... It is a good show. It is a really good show. Um, and there's like 27 seasons. So it's like, if I can get into this, that's all mm -hmm. of my decision set making, for set for the next couple of months, at least. <laughs> I had to stop after, I don't think I finished season one, because she interferes. She's the medical examiner. She interferes so much in the cases that by before I even finished finish season one, I could attribute several murders specifically directly to her interfering oh. in the police investigation that that annoyed me so much. That I was like, I need a break. So it's you, a different baby. actress every season. No, but I think, um, so I started watching it from the beginning of the 90s, you yeah. know. Um, and then at some point it changes over to a different actress. Yeah, so, I saw Amelia Fox. Yeah, so basically at some point they, at, at some point they change actress. She's Maybe I'll start. Of, I was going to say she's cousin of the unfortunate Lawrence Fox. No, she's unfortunate for being his cousin. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, um, maybe I'll start again from her. Yeah. From her season. I'll give it another shot. Then Julia says the bill. The bill, yeah. That was good. I used to watch that. Oh, I re oh, I remember the theme tune. Yeah. And Thin Blue Line. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was the Th comedy one, wasn't it? Yeah. A little shout out to um 90s EastEnders. And also I want to say British Empire. <laughs> Oh, that was so good. <laughs> that was so good. Then Julia says, Xena, warrior princess. And she mm -hmm. says, I aspire to be a little bit more Xena. And mm -hmm. keeping up appearances, although I'm probably more like Hyacinth Bouquet. Oh, that was a good, I fucking love Victor Meldrew. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. One foot and in then, the grave. And last but not least, she says, gladiators. Yes. Then Joanne says, heartbreak high in Seinfeld. With mm -hmm. a bit of Sunset Beach. We fucking used to love that one. Oh, so, so sad when that finished. You remember we yeah. used to love it? Yeah, Brookside. Wasn't it all a dream? Sunset Beach, I think so, yeah. 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 <laughs> so funny. What a stupid way to end. <laughs> How do we wrap this up? I know. 
oh sorry then Brooks Eye which I don't think we watched much of we never got into it but I know that it was also groundbreaking because it was like the first time there was a lesbian kiss on yeah, British TV with Anna Friel, huh? yeah there was the whole I remember what in the 90s there was a whole um the person who murdered his family I think his wife and his daughter and buried them under the patio so that was an ongoing oh, thing yeah. for ages and yeah we never got then into it Joanne says casualty and it's funny because that's what I didn't ever get into because I can't watch anything medical it gives me too much anxiety I'll tell you one that fucked with my head as a child just made my anxiety go through the roof was 911 yeah um I don't have oh. the same thing with medical ones I quite like it um and I used to love ER yeah you see ER I've never got into or Grey's Anatomy I maybe I should I have one says it's good but I haven't because I just can't with, you know I what? can't with anything sad or scary but that emergency 911 is that what it was oh, yeah um Grey's Anatomy I started watching but actually the main character Meredith Grey is so fucking annoying oh that I just couldn't watch it anymore she's honestly the most annoying character oh really annoying. oh I've never even watched one episode but should I tell you what I watched this last week which I don't think we watched in the 90s. I, I knew of it. I don't think we were really that into it. I know what I'm you're going to say. What am I going to say? Tell me. Monk. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is good. It's not even 90s, though, but it looks like it is. No, I was watching. Well, you know when the kids get old enough to start learning how to use Netflix. <laughs> anyway, Che was watching Mr. Bean. Yeah. I fucking laughed out loud. And you know I don't find things funny. I don't find... and. I, I only laugh at like three people make me laugh in this whole world. But I was laughing at Mr. Bean. <laughs> this is fucking genius. I need like, to watch Mr. Bean again. Yeah. You know what? I thought it was so funny. Like I watched the man versus B where he's like. Um, oh, I remember that episode, actually. It, I think it's like three episodes or something. And it's short. But then we were watching old school Mr. Bean from the 90s. And it, it, it's actually it's just so funny. Um. I don't know if this is 90s, uh, but oh, fuck. The other thing with Rowan Atkinson. Um, Blackadder? Different... Yes, Blackadder. That's exactly. <clears throat> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Who else have we got? Go on. Tell me. Tell me more. Did that say it? Was that not enough? No, we had someone who made posts a comment on the post. Oh. 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 Didn't we? I don't know. Uh, maybe you read it out. Maybe we don't have more. No, I always say DM, so sometimes I, I don't look at them. Oh, and someone said that they answered on Facebook. So did you check that? Yes, I did. Okay, so let me check. So. Oh, we do. Okay. So, yeah, Julia said she, she replied on Facebook. Oh, we've got Gina. 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 Says, um, Beverly Hills 90210. Yes. And you know what? That was so important because it really, did, like, it separated the kind of people yeah. who are the Brandons versus the, what was the other guy? Luke. Luke. No, Luke Perry was the actor. Oh, Brandon he, versus Dylan. Dil Dylan. <laughs> yeah. Dylan all the way. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid so. <laughs> and then Melrose Place. Do you know what? I, I, I remember watching that, but thinking, oh, I shouldn't be watching this. <laughs> it was I don't like, think we I watched it. it. I, yeah. I remember seeing it like at night and being like, oh, this is for adults. <laughs> oh, I do want to say Days of Our Lives. Yeah, like Sunset Beach. Oh my God. Do you know what? Like Those... Sands Through the Hourglass. So are the Days of Our Lives. Oh, so mm -hmm. cheap. Yeah. And then Gina says Party Five, which we used to fucking love. Party of Five. Yeah. yeah uh, you used to fancy the older brother. Yeah. I think you fancied both. There's another brother, wasn't there? No. Just, no. Just the older one. Yes, yeah. <laughs> correct. <laughs> but, oh, do you know what? I actually can't wait to watch Mr. Bean again. <laughs> All right, well, um, okay, so next people's polls. Next What's people's the next one? polls. Cartoons. Childhood cartoons. Mm -hmm. And, because um, you know what no, I would love? To do. Uh, uh, toys. So... Oh, okay. All right, so yeah. that's two that we've got lined up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, because people either want puke or piss or nostalgia. That's what we're learning. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So <laughs> childhood cartoons, it. childhood toys. Got it. Yeah. Um, and there might be overlap. I love those um, Instagram accounts where it's like retro 90s nostalgia and 80s nostalgia ones. I watched one today. I was just about watching <laughs> a reel about like 
things that kids in the 90s did when they were bored and it was like yes, stabbing. I was just going to say that. I was just going to say that stabbing the, the rubber. Putting the, <laughs> the needle through the, the top yeah, layer of your skin. Oh my God. It, it, it really shows you, the, you know, kids that were brought up without screens, what we have to do for our yeah. entertainment. We didn't have Candy Crush <laughs> no. or anything like that. We had to make oh our God. own entertainment by flicking the, what was it? The door stopper. <laughs> Yeah. And putting the hair claw on your lips. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that real. I've seen it so many times that every time it makes me laugh. It's and like, then yep. to, you know those pens that have the four different pens yeah. in one? Pushing, Pushing them, them all down and feeling like such a time. rebel. Yeah. <laughs> what did we think would happen? <laughs> I don't know, but we're like, I'm not picking one color. <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, sexy listeners, we have sexy listener merch. Get your t-shirts, but we also have our new merch. So get, oh, get a notorious lesbian t-shirt. I am not a lesbian and I'm going to be rocking notorious lesbian. But we've got three new merch ranges. We don't just have t-shirts. We got bags. We got caps. We got notebooks. We got stickers. What? You want a cushion with Susie's sister's quote? You can get it. We got it. <laughs> I don't think Susie will mind me saying, but she's already ordered notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh I, I envisage her ordering one for her whole family. Like, do you know what? Member. We got a message from her sister. <gasps> and we post about it. Oh yeah. Oh, I thought I told you. <laughs> no, sister. And because imagine how surprised you would be. <laughs> You'd be like, "What the fuck <laughs> is this world?" If something you said. Oh, years previously yeah. ends up on a t-shirt <laughs> so Susie's sister's name is Helen and she looks so cute too oh, yeah. she She's she be. posted it on stories and she said thanks so much I laughed so much at this I almost pissed on the floor because <laughs> that's where you're meant to piss <laughs> that's what we learned <laughs> all right sexy listeners oh. and my dearest sister in the whole world I, um, love, I you. love you love you all of you all of you and good night. Off to watch Mwah. Mr. Bean. Mwah. Bye. Hey there. Thanks for being a loyal listener. Do you need a new website or want to boost your social media performance? Or do you hate podcast editing? You've tried optimizing your website and social media channels, but you're still not getting the listeners, downloads, and engagement you want? We, the Safi sisters, love helping people with tasks that they hate. We know a thing or two about podcasts, websites, and social media, and we love working with other podcasters and business owners. So why not head over to SwitchbladeSistersSocialClub.com and go to our Work With Us section. We believe in collaboration over competition. A rising tide raises all ships. Bye!